Hello again and welcome to episode 9 of the Matt Black Podcast. I've got a bit of a mouthful here to uh, introduce to you. I've got three guests for the first time. We've never had a threesome on the sofa. Not in here anyway. <laughs> right, so it's... Uh, I'm here all week, try the chicken. Uh, so we've got Luke Smithson and Wesley Brook from Hearts and Souls. Hearts, Hearts and Souls, that's, that's correct. Yeah, it's, it's quite a new band, so we're, uh, we're going to be talking a lot about this. And then we've got Paul Guerin from the Choir Boys and Down and Outs. Hello. Have you got any other bands on the go as well? Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's time consuming, but obviously I'm working with, with the chaps as well, you know what I mean? Yes. And various things, so. Yeah. They're the, they're the two main yeah, things. Yeah, we, we all have yeah. little things that we just yes. dip into, don't we? You know, uh, fall into. Definitely. Right then, guys. So... Hearts and Souls. What's what's the situation at the moment? I've, you've sent me some tracks. You've got uh, you've got an EP out, and, it's, yep, and EP you've sent out. me. Uh, is it an unreleased track that you've sent me quite recently? Whispers. Yeah, whispers. Yeah, that sounds amazing. To be honest, I was absolutely loving it. The the organ sound in it, big uplifting chorus. It's it's a, got a bit of a feel good thing going on. I think it's on. Um is it's it out, out today? It's out, it's gone. I'll check it's on. They emailed me. Spotify it's, it's, it's okay. out there. Yeah, it's, it's gone today. today. Um, right. Got his first airplay a couple of weeks ago on uh, Yorvik Radio, yep. and um, we just wanted to do a bit of promo promo for it, really. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Just yeah. come out and talk about the uh, this one, the one coming up. And yeah, anything before, and anything around it, and anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, the radio thing yesterday, what was the situation? Was that did you have to go down? Yep. Yeah, yeah, we went went to the studio. It was through um, Paul Wynn, who we kind of know through the blues scene. Yeah. Blue Circuit, I got to know him, um, done a few gigs with him and one well, over the years. Um, he, has, he has his radio show over in York, um, often has musicians in for live sessions. Uh, so I asked him if he wanted to spin Whispers for us the first time. He did, um, and we had the opportunity to go in and just play for him. Awesome. It was great, really nice live session. Yeah, and enjoyed it. It's good. We, t- we talked about the idea of doing that in here today, but yeah. I think we'd have been a bit pressed for space without doing it separately. So we, m- we might be something we can revisit. Next time, well, we'd love to do it yeah. again. Yeah, I mean, for us, it's like you know, we we like a loud guitar-driven band. To yeah, play, you yeah. know, like the live sound is a big noise, so it's just nice for us to be able to kind of do it acoustically as well. Yeah. Well, you've got a choice of pianos there. You didn't have to bring one. Yeah, so. this is true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, it's uh, it's obviously it's, for the people watching. It's all off shot, but there's there's just there's a lot of boys' toys in the corner, isn't there? And girls' <laughs> toys as well. There's a, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people just coming through now. That's amazing. Lot of different various various instruments, isn't there? With I'm, uh, I think it's just like, it shows like a, just a different side of the band. If you can do you know like the acoustic thing. Yeah. And uh, that was the first time we'd done like an acoustic show together. And um, that's yeah. We'd just love to do it again. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just it's an enjoy playing. Yeah, my uh, one of my bands, we've done that a few times because we play that kind of like hard rock, almost verging into metal at times, and to strip it back completely acoustic, it's yeah. it gives it such a different feel as well, doesn't it? And things shine through that you don't normally hear because it's just just mixed in with everything else, isn't it? it. So, um, have you have you got any kind of consideration to doing? Live shows in that format at any point? Would, it, would we play acoustic shows live? Yeah. 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 I would all day long. I have yeah. no problem. <laughs> we did, didn't we? Did, we, we did. did. HRH. We did. We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Kiwi, the guitar player, and I are talking about um, we're gonna, we are going to start doing that. Um, mainly because it gives us an opportunity to be able to play some of the venues that may be too difficult to play otherwise. Yeah. Yes, and we might be starting to do that with a friend of ours called Rory, who is. Well, I don't know how to describe him really. He's a very good singer. He sounds very much like Paul Rogers. Right. But if you, but he has the sense of humour of like a Steve Cogan character. <laughs> it's an unusual combination. But he's extraordinarily. Oh, right, yeah. Right, right, yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. But he's a very, very popular lad. <laughs> so, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we want to do that. We want to do some of that. And he might, he might be with us and all if he wants to come with us and that sort of stuff. But we haven't done it yet because we yeah. needed to finish off what we were doing this week. Yeah, which was recording and things like that. So this new this new song that's out at the moment mm-hmm. then is the new song that's out the one that's out at the moment, not whispers. the one that we're recording. The, the, one the whispers, the one that I've heard. The whispers. Yeah. yeah, 
Mm, so that's out like now, that. as of today, today did you yeah. say? Right. Mm. So is is are there others that's to follow that's going to be part of the same collective? Yes. Um, yes. I don't know if you're doing albums, because not everyone's doing albums at the moment, are they? They're, it's, they're, look, it's, it's an ongoing thing. I mean, I just see, because obviously I'm working with them, it, it, sometimes it's best not to say, right, we're making an album. Yeah. We're making a body of work here. Mm. And then see how you know where the market lies you know as it yeah. is it's just best to just to get a just keep recording writing yeah etc and then take it from there yeah it's uh we did that kind of thing just before a lot we we released an album and then about uh maybe late 2019 we just threw a song out there not really actually it with anything else we didn't really know why we were doing it but it just with the direction why not of, yeah the direction of the sound had changed drastically so we thought well we'll put that out there yeah and during lockdown we recorded a 14 track album but that's not on it because we thought there's no point re-recording it and all the production's different now so yeah so we've just got this random standalone song between some albums but mm. i don't think it hurts these days it doesn't it's not hurt the same. It, you know the whole format the media mm. everything's it's a change it's not as so much it's changed it's constantly changing and everybody's watching yeah to see who's going to make the first move whether it's the record companies the agents mm. yeah media everything whispers was slightly different to everything else that had been done before anyway yeah not the first tracks that were done were they came out of more of a what do you put it the bands that would be known more to be more southern, but not Leonard Skinner. Yeah. So bands like The Crows and things that may have associated sounds of that, like Humble Pie. So that would have been the like a nineteen the nineteen seventy sound that we. He, if you cut him in half, would have nineteen seventies wrote through wrote through him. Yeah. This is, this is all he is, and everything that he did with the down and outs, was all. Kind of. The 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 the, uh, the goalposts of what they did, the music that they did, as that band was set between a certain period. So he's a very good to go to to say, I've got this, but it sounds too like that. So how do we get it? Yeah, <laughs> it's, just, it's just lining so things it. up. So you know, not too diverse, but not. It's it's too it's very difficult linear. at the moment, isn't it? As well, because especially if you're doing music that's influenced heavily by people that have come before mm. it's hard to make it almost stand out as well isn't it you know oh, well, I, I, I don't think <laughs> i try to get around it i just kind of accept that would you know we, we, we just sound like that band yeah, or we sound like these yeah, these certain bands that yeah. we love yeah I think, I think so um but but the whispers track was a bit different um uh because it, it 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 didn't well for a kickoff it, when it when it went into being recorded with with it, 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 do you know what? I'll tell the truth, right? Yeah, the, I'm, not, I'm, you know, people always associate me with certain types of music and that, but I do listen to just about anything, mm. and I leave things on, and I might not tell anybody about it. Oh, I do. You know, but, I, I but tell everybody about so, me. So, so, that, so, that, so that track would have, <laughs> that track would have actually really have come more on a bass. Not that it was, not that I sat down and went, I want to write a song like this. It, but the music, the style actually came from Noel Gallagher. Which is not something that would immediately be like, oh, Luke really loves Oasis, but I do. Mm. But anyway, but it was, but it was just, it was just, it was a track that he was playing, and I, it wasn't that. Um, it's not taken from that song. It's it's just the the, the chord structures, the, the way that it's strummed. Yeah. And then, so but when when we first recorded it on the acoustics, it had a, it sounded very nineteen sixties, with the basics. We had a twelve string Rickenbacker on it originally Ooh. my friend Richie has these <laughs> guitars I was going to ask him for the guitar and do it myself and then I thought he's going to want to do it himself and so I got him to do it and then we listened to it and then we changed it again and then and then I, I can't remember how exactly I can't remember I don't remember being at a petrol pump and the phone went and I don't know whether I, I don't know whether I'd already messaged it anyway Sam who was a friend of ours from years ago my name, me and Q, I played in bands with Sam, when Sam were like... Sam Wood? Yeah, Sam Wood. Yeah, when he were like, uh, I'm going to say 17. Um, and 
I, I, now I'm, I'm not sure and he might correct me if he sees this but I think I met Sam the first time at a Hanoi Rocks gig we were lucky enough to be able to open for Hanoi and I think Sam was like in the audience and I think that's the I think that is the first time I met him he's gone on to be an established guitar player in rock I don't know what he classes himself as whether he's a new wave or I don't know the people the, the, each generation has words for I, he's a guitar player and he's a bloody good one there's, right? there's too many subcategories I, 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 now isn't there I it? couldn't <laughs> get, can I swear you can yeah I couldn't give a fuck about it right yeah and I never have it's all it's just he's just really good that's yeah. it and um, uh, and uh, so I asked him or Q asked him and, and he said yeah so then we had the uh, out of field original rhythm guitar tracks with Scott Gorham's clone esque playing, you know, mm. that style of Thin Lizzy guitaring that's, you know, synonymous with people like that. But he does it very well. Well, he must do, mustn't he? Otherwise, he wouldn't be playing, you know. <laughs> you know? And then so that all became together. So it went from being an Oasis track to. Uh, something that had more rock and roll element in it to Thin Lizzy on it and then yeah. by the time him you know Hammer and then you got what you got and that's it and the track's written about something that was going on at the time and it was something that it was something that one rock star had said to another rock star and I happened to be in the room when I overheard the conversation and I thought I like that and I took it and that's where that song came <laughs> from but I'm not going to be naming all those people out. Yeah. Um, so the, the the Oasis influence how old are you? Where's that? Me, I'm eighteen. Yeah, me one, too. Yeah. Months old. I am. I am. <laughs> where's this actually? My dad. Um, yeah. I'm. Uh, yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm. Uh, it's funny, we don't look I'm, like, do we? How, how old am I? Eighteen. Then. I am. Yeah, nineteen. Nineteen. If you're anybody asking anybody in Doncaster, I'm eighteen. I'm. Uh, it's. Uh, I'm. Uh, I'm forty two. Ah, see, we're we're in a similar age bracket. Mm. Cause I, I'm nearly thirty eight, and I went through a bit of a phase. I liked Oasis when I was a kid because. Mm. What's the story came out yeah. and it was like oh brilliant and then as I got more into <clears throat> what I just collect, kind of people do it as think, classic rock now well, well, I kind yeah, of went I mean, no we can't like Oasis. I think it's, I think it's <laughs> safe to say that 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 although I, I'm not I couldn't tell you an astounding amount about I saw Oasis at Main Road mm-hmm. right um, and I watched everybody in that crowd at Main Road sing every word of every song top to bottom. The, the, you know, and that's what happened at Main Road. I can't remember whether I was there the first or second night. If my cousin Joel was here, he'd tell me, because if he went on the first night, he'd just be like, well, that's not first, mate, because that's how he is. <laughs> um, but um, but uh, so, yeah, so the, the, the... But that band, I think that they perhaps influenced a lot of people into guitar music at a time maybe there wasn't as much around as it once was. And they managed to do it in a way that captured the heart of the of the nation. That was yeah. my view of Oasis. I've never been particularly interested in whether it's cool. I, I'm only interested in whether it's good. Yeah. So it, whether someone's friend later on says, oh, well, I don't like this because it's passe or it's just, it's all a lot of bollocks. And I think it was Joe Walsh that did a track called Play, Play Rock and Roll for you. And he says in it about, you know, when I watch the, uh, what is it, watch the, I watch the critics try to, you know, uh, analyse a, a, a career in trend. I just sit back and watch it come and go. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I think it's just like, all right, then they're going to say this about that about the other about but it's like, nah, it's just, it's just, it is what it is. Yeah, um, I think there's a few bands that, even if they're not necessarily what we'd class as kind of your, your typical 70s, 80s rock bands, they've kind mm-hmm. of, they've, they've just kept the torch going. Yeah. Bands like Darkness, which some people okay. might kind yeah. of take, the yeah. mick out of and things yeah, well, like they, that. They were tongue in cheek, but they, they had a lot of elements, different things. They I mean, kept I it going, didn't they? I, I remember the first record, Permission to Land, but I, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't. Again, they had all that thing going on with the twin guitars and all. But he, he probably knows a little bit more about them than I do. Well, just going off what you were saying, I mean, you know, whatever it is, you've either got songs or you haven't. Yeah. So, you know, all of that, you know, whether it's Oasis, Darkness, everybody. You know, and that's why, you know, whether together or not, the longevity comes from being able to write a great song. Yeah. You know, and that's what attracted me when I first met these fellas. I was going to ask where the uh, where the connection began well, and how... It was, I mean... It's, it's ridiculous. A, the whole thing is ridiculous. It's it just, a, like most of the best things, complete accident. Because, you know, I, I like driving old Jaguars, as does he. 
and I lived in Harrogate at the time and uh, had a problem with the Jag and I found out through, you know, friends, you know, you've got to see Les in Wakefield, he's the man and all that. So Les was doing his cars and he was supposed to pick me up, to take me to pick my car up, you know, just yeah. stuff. And he says, I can't make it. But he says, I know these young fellas. He says, what, you know, they both look like Donovan, right? <laughs> and uh, 60s pop star. And he says, they'll come and pick you up. And I remember I was at my kitchen window and it was like a scene from um, Living on a Prey, you know, when they're coming out of the mist. These two <laughs> heavily chained up rock and rollers coming up my long path. And <laughs> so that's when we met, and you know, and on the on the journey to Wakefield, I says, do you want to hear some of our stuff? And, you know, played it. I went, this is dynamite. Yeah. You know, I'm in, you know, so I'd like to produce this. And it, and it went from there, you see. Yeah. Mm. Mm, so. that, that's about right. Yeah. I, I uh, yeah, that there, that's it. I, I was asked to go get him. But the thing is, I had seen his band pretty much every gig that they'd ever done anywhere I could get to for the last 20 years. <laughs> Plus, the first time I saw him, he was on tour with Whitesnake. Yeah. Which was, oh, a long time ago. <laughs> Isn't everything? And um, so, yeah, so I'd watched them all, all of that music. So for me, it was brilliant because to each their own. Do you know, one thing that's a big deal to one person may not be a big deal to another. Yeah, you yeah. Know, if I went to a rapper and said, I'm doing a record with Paul, they'd probably go, who? Yeah. You know, but so it's all about what you class as being a big deal. To me, it was or is because it's when you've got that and the way the music that you're trying to do when you've got somebody who's around who's so familiar with the, un, the things that people don't necessarily do much as well because I don't hear a lot of open G guitar bands playing slide. I hear people who I'm not going to get smart right anyway I hear things <laughs> that, that maybe that they think that it is and perhaps it isn't right uh, and uh, so when you've got somebody around who knows about all that sort of stuff as well, and he goes, it's, it's good because I think that's getting a narrower and narrower window of people who can play, like, say, Bry Kuda. Yeah. I don't even hear his name mentioned anymore. You know, um, people who I've seen play great slide, like Hubert Sumlin, who's an ancient, ancient old blues guy who's now died and was fortunate enough to meet him once. And um, there's a lot of the old stuff that I think is not making its way through into the modern music I mean, slide playing and open tuning playing and the things that have come before and it's a shame yeah mm -hmm. I do see stuff like that when, on YouTube and cause I, I actively look for new music all the mm. time I, I didn't when I was younger I kind of just got stuck in the 80s at one point and just if everything didn't sound like 80s rock I didn't want to know and as I've got mm. older now I, I, I look for everything yeah. and it's a normal but, path that yeah It'll and there's not a lot of like you said, there's there's a, there's not a lot of these bands and these different artists pushing through that are, that do certain styles, and it's quite frustrating because some of them they're not relying on a computer to do, you know, to make yeah. everything sound great. I mean, there it, are some like amazing um, new artists, people like um, the one I sent you the other day, the, uh, Tim Henson. I'm sure as a guitar player you've seen him. Mm. Um, it was tricky. I just think it, it's just. But I didn't know what doing. It was doing. But just amazing things with the with the guitar, just kind of almost redefining what playing guitar is. Do do you know of him? No, no. Wow. This is what I love about this, doing just, this because I I find I don't know. So I've only seen like things. one song. He looks like he's from Mars, Asia. Well, going <laughs> so going on what you're telling me, is like is that. he the guy with the throat tattoo? Yeah. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, it, I've it seen him. Like all the, the I didn't know what his name was. I've seen because his videos appear very, left, right, and centre. Don't they? Plays guitar like that. Yeah. Big, like the big sound, jumper, just... hair that I wish yeah. I had, uh, yeah, yeah. and <laughs> guitar yeah. talent I wish I had. Want his jumper exactly as well. and, and I want his jumper and his cheekbones, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen his bird? That's what? Have you seen his missus yet? I no. I think there's things that we're going to have. I just oh. know whether she would fit, I don't know. No, <laughs> no idea. Anybody watching it, anybody got any photos, put them in the comments. I'd like to see what his bird looks like. He wants to watch his guitar and I want to clear up some other stuff. So what we're having is cheekbones, his guitar talent, his, his hair, his hair, his jumper in the winter. His jumper in the winter. And certain days and in the summer in England. Yeah, yeah. We're not sporting him, are we? We're not getting a sports slot with him, are we? Not anymore. Now? Not anymore, that's finished, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you never know, she... Never mind. No, it's but not, it, it's still, not, it all yeah, boils down to songs. Yeah. You know, you could be as good or best looking the whole thing. 
you know, I'm, I, well, I don't need to be a firm believer, you know, that's where it's at. Yeah, and it, sometimes it's frustrating because there's, there's some people with great songs, but it doesn't come through. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, it's not through any fault of their own. It's sometimes it's it's timing. It's just oh, it's the, meeting the, the right people, isn't it? Well, just, it's, all, it's always been the same. I, I, th- I remember. I mean, this isn't. I, I often feel that the people, I, like musicians and stuff, for instance, mm. I, or, or, or whatever you want to call yourself, a musician, a guitar player, whatever, right? Uh, I, I once watched. It was now. I I always screw up his first name, right? Orson or Orson Wells? It's one of the other, isn't it? Which one? Orson. Is it? Orson. Orson Card. Mm. Orson. Right. And he was he was talking about the 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 acting industry and all those sorts of things. Keep the dad he, jokes uh, coming. I appreciate and it. And he was so. saying he was saying that um, it basically said that he's no he he as as a person who was classed as being the the person who made the most famous movie of all time, which he is or was. But I don't think any, I don't think anything's changed on that front. But he was saying that he'd seen a lot of people who had absolute, you know, skills in acting, but they never really got the the shot. And he said, that it takes sadly, it takes more than more than talent to be able to achieve things, in his opinion. But I kind of think he's a person who has the uh, the resume to be able to make a decision like that. Yeah, you know? there's a lot of people who are like massively talented, but they don't know how to market themselves, yeah. or they've not yeah. got that drive to actually push what they're doing there's in front of called, people's faces. There's a band <laughs> called Jason and the Scorchers, and I think they're probably one of the most underrated bands I've ever really kind of you know listened to. You know? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot like that. I though. played with them as well. <laughs> Go, yeah. he's cleaning in house you know, you yeah, yeah. Doing this we could probably cut an hour out you just email me a list yeah, to be honest. <laughs> yeah so uh, how, how do you feel and you can obviously mm. be, be as brutal as you like because he's sat at the side but what do you think the what, how has your music changed since Paul's involvement what not in not I in terms cry of a lot more now. Yeah, in, yeah. In, in, <laughs> does, does the writing style different? You know, how how are you collaborating? It's not like uh, well, basically, you see, right, basically, I was never a million miles away from where say a band like the Choir Boys would play. There, not that we write songs like them. I'm talking about the 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 kind of Keith Richards esque sound and playing and all mm. that sort of stuff that's what I was saying earlier on about it sits well because you've got somebody who understands what's going on so he just kind of says to c- c- cut that section down by three and a half hours or, you know you're writing a song you know like and it's people want to listen to it perhaps so you don't want to have one that's you know 25 minutes long so yeah. the four hour bass you're not doing section, prog I guess, so. <laughs> but what has happened well there's just been basically what's happening is you're having what I believe is called pre-production so to speak where you've got somebody saying right well your drummer's playing a beat every you know and, and but then there's a massive fill and another massive fill and another massive fill and another massive fill and then there's all these cymbals another massive fill then there's a seven minute guitar solo this isn't good yeah. So chop 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 chop, and we go through lyrics, and we just you know, and, and and we go through stuff, and 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 working on things like trying to make things sit well together rather than just have them there. Yeah. Just just we spent a long time trying to because you're trying to produce something that's good while still trying to keep the sound of the music in a liveish performance style. Yeah. And from you know, how long ago is it now? Fifty years ago. Which I'm not there to change anything. You know, the raw product is. You know, there's nothing I've heard that I didn't go. Yeah, great. Yeah. But let's take it and turn it into a format, and where everybody's playing together, everybody's on the same page. You know, it's it's it's, it's standard procedure, really. Yeah, yeah. You know, but when you've got, you know, I've learned this over the years. You know, when you've got the band producing themselves, everybody's got a different opinion. Yeah, and someone might take it personally that you don't like that, that that bass drum beat or something, so you're kind of the fall guy at the same time. Yeah, but it, you know, if someone's got to say no, yes, no. That doesn't mean they have to agree, or it happens that way. But at least if someone makes a decision, then it's a it's a point of debate rather than just I was just you know arguing, you know. But yeah, I want to play it like this. Yeah, but. That's fair enough, but it doesn't work in the song. 
Yeah, I but, think that's something uh, uh, again that you say. Just it, that's a kind of natural progression because it is. I, I, I was it's making me think about like the most recent thing that we've recorded yeah. compared to when I was a teenager recording in a band and we'd be like, well, we need to do the riff again here because that's part of the structure. But then it just feels like it's dragging on. It's like, well, the song's not flowing now, so maybe we half the riff yeah. at that point. Mm, you know, just yeah. little things that you would just do just m- makes it a little bit more radio friendly, makes All of keeps that. people's attention because. There's different versions of songs. I mean, you can you could do a radio edit of a song as, as well, yeah. you know. But then, you know, we we did something on a, a previous album where we did a seven eight minute song, yeah. And we, to be honest, we've never played it live, but we we just put it in there because we wanted you to. Know it was just. I don't know about that song, but I know about eight minute songs. We've done a few with but Tom. But it's, it's it's just one of those, and, we, and to be fair, we we we've, we've never played it live, but we we just joke about you know like if if you if we're waiting for something if we're, if we're on if we're going on a tour and we're at a petrol station too long we're like oh my god we could have listened to requiem in, in this time you know because it's you just just little in jokes because well, that was the thing with uh with whispers this, that was the first one where um it's got my keyboard parts on it yeah so like the ep was um already recorded released um before i joined the band and um, you know, Whispers was the first one that I'd kind of uh, recorded. Uh, yeah. th- the next song that we're on with at the minute is, um, again, all kind of recorded on my VSTs from my home studio. and um, It's just nice to have sort of my parts on those records now. Yeah. So we so obviously we've, we've set this up today, haven't we, from chatting, uh, because we've got a bit of a mutual friend. So you, you play for the Tom Kilner band yeah. as well, which yeah. is uh, managed by my friend John Hardcastle. John, yeah. uh, so we, we we've kind of linked up this way. Um, so how did this come about for you to be joining Hearts and Souls then? So um, it was through um, a tour um, two years ago. I was on the road with um, an artist from the states, uh, Darnell Cole. Yeah. Um, who was the front man of um, Porcelain Hill? Was his band from America? And he'd, he'd been touring this country a few years on the trot previously, but as it happened. Um, two years ago, shortly before they were due to come here and tour again, um, the band disbanded, and he either he had the choice of either forming a band, sharpish, yeah, UK bass players, or cancel the tour. And he's not the kind of guy to cancel anything. So um, he got a band together, and that included um, the drummer from Hearts and Souls, uh, Jimmy Milne, and. Uh, Sort of on the road with Jimmy, I was getting on with him. Um, really well enjoyed done. his playing. Very well done. I love Jimmy. <laughs> you know, I love Jimmy. And um, like sort of during his playing, you know, when we just kind of on stage um, playing together, I just really enjoyed playing with him. I'm like, I'd love to do a project with him. And it, it just came came up as like, well, I, I do play with this other band, and yeah, we are kind of looking for a keys player. So I'm like, double win. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I just came and sat in on a rehearsal. Um, in fact, no, Q came to a Darnell gig. Um, Tom Cusick, the other guitar player, came down just to check what was going on. Um, I got invited to the rehearsal, and then that would be maybe a year or so ago. Yeah, time yeah. flies, it will be. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know, longer, probably. Is it maybe 18 months yeah. or something? But it's generally how it happens, you know, it's like the synchronicity thing. Yeah. You know, you meet somebody who knows somebody, and yeah. bum, 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 it's... A that, times that's over the years. kind of the majority of projects I've been. I hate going yeah. to. I've, been, I've only been to a handful of auditions in my lifetime, I've and never it's been usually one. going. Yeah, um, and I've never always got them all. And and I think that's one of the reasons why you. I hate kind them. of believe in putting somebody on the spot like a job interview might not necessarily be the best way to. It's a very unnatural. Get situation. something out of somebody. Yeah, and yeah. we on that one. I think, uh, like you say, if it's people that you've you've met along the way um, and they've seen you and they've seen what you're capable of. I mean, it's different when you're young. I mean, my first yeah. ever band, my grandparents found a newspaper clipping, you know, and I had to phone someone up and we... Yeah, probably we got was together. school. Yeah, they didn't even have a full line-up. I was just an addition yeah. to join as a guitar player. We didn't yeah. have a singer for about a year and then uh, we was like, well... You sing some guide vocals while, we, and, and after about six months, they went, "Oh, you're starting to sing in tune now, so maybe you should be the singer." So, yeah. <laughs> and that's how that's happened. <laughs> so but I'm I, stuck I, doing that now. I, I love stories like that, how things evolve, and just by chance, it's like you know, meeting these chaps it was through a, a car. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just you know, you can plan a lot of things over years, and generally, the best things have just fallen out of the sky just by total chance. Yeah. 
you know what I mean? So, you can just, you, you, know, you say you just you just find people, don't you, sometimes? Yeah. It's, not, it's not even through a friend, it's just like, say, something non-music related. Yeah. Um, it, makes for, it makes for a better story, though, doesn't it, as well? I've... Especially when it's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I was saying I'm still doing um, I think with Tom, you know, nothing's going to change that. It just so happened that around that kind of time we weren't, um, the, you know, the diary wasn't absolutely packed with gigs and I had, you know, availability for another seat somewhere. Yeah. And um, it, there's just been a lot of synchronicity there. And I know you had uh, John on the, uh, the podcast a few episodes back. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think John's been... Um, well, in fact, I, I, I saw John at. Um, did John used to play in the band? Was John in the band? He, he did. did. Was it Silver Jet? Oh, Silver so Jet. right. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, now I. Did I, you say I, you'd seen him once? Many times with them. Okay. I know John. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody knows John. Everybody knows well, John. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw him at <laughs> um, gigs. He'd been coming to Tom Kilner's gigs. Yeah. Um, you know, I just kind of see him there. You know, just to say hello. You know, and then uh, you know the relationship formed between um, Tom and John and. Uh, he's been managed. You know, Tom's manager now for um, might not be quite a year, but it's probably coming on for that. Yeah. Yeah. So we're all kind of working together on that project too. And I mean, we've got you know this. The diary is really filling up with uh, Tom's stuff for this year. Um, yeah. Through John. Um, you know, it does got, make things happen. It absolutely does. You know, we played some of his shows, some of the upstaged shows, um, Call of the Wild and such, and we've always had a really good time there. Yeah, you know, I played at the corporation for him a few months ago, and um, he just you know looks after his artists, and it's um, it's just you know we all get on. Yeah. So it's you know it's really good. And, I you always... know, the, the, the Tom Kilner project is kind of moving forward now that we've got like a dedicated person to look after that kind of that side of things. Yeah. Where Tom can just now focus more on his sort of songwriting and um, you know the things that he does best. Yeah. Uh, and then John takes care oh, of. Oh, wouldn't that be lovely? Honestly, it, it's worked <laughs> really, really well. Yeah. Um, you know, we, so we've got this album due out in April. Um, we're doing a launch show at the end of next month in Sheffield, uh, and then we're touring off the back of it. So you know, things are just progressing. Yeah. And, uh, it's it's great. Yeah, it just snowballs. It's yeah. All, yeah. And, and I'm going to say as well, it's it's nice when you've got people looking after those side of things, who have played in bands as well on various levels yeah. from shit holes up to you know some some quite prestigious gigs as well and because they know what the musicians want they know you know how you want to be treated it's it's not people just turning up thinking well i just want to try and cream some money off of a band i don't know anything yeah. about music or what they're doing so yeah it's it's nice that he's, he's got that background as well yeah and i, mean, and I can see the improvement because like i'm in my eighth year i think it is with tom uh, so, you know, we've kind of, we've done the independent thing, we've had another, we've been with another management company in the past and quite work. Um, but now, so, you know, since we've been working with John, everything just kind of clicks. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, I say the whole thing is just moving forward. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to another sort of busy summer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a bit tough. Good, good. So, uh, how, uh, what's the plans then in terms of touring, releasing alongside... This project as well, then. Well, so, in terms of kind of um, bookings for Hearts and Souls, but you know, we, we've not got a busy diary at the minute. Um, we are um, more focusing on writing, recording, releasing quality material, and uh, you know, when the the bigger shows come along, uh, like the HRH, as we've had the opportunity to support Wayward Sons um, yeah. recently. So you know, when those opportunities come, then obviously we'll take it. But um, you know, I've, I've got room to be touring with both. Yeah. So yeah, it's all good. I think you've got to do, haven't you, to survive as a as an individual muso these days. <laughs> you've just got to just throw yourself at various things. And you, see, I, I try and do the same thing, but I, I try and do things that I've set up because then yeah. I can I deal with all the bookings. You're the boss. <laughs> not that I'm the no, I wouldn't say I'm the boss. I definitely don't feel like it at times. But it's nice to just kind of get people in and say, well. You've got this kind of availability that matches mine. Is that good for you? Great, cool. We'll do that many months a year, and then this project does this, and this project does that, and it seems to work at the moment. So, well, like in terms of kind of coordinating that last year uh, when we we did the tour again with uh, with Darnell, which was like a, a five week tour. You know, we did maybe like thirty shows or something. Mm. But the synergy there was like the the band w became um, in that second year essentially Tom's band. So Tom was out doing um, rhythm guitar and backing vocals. Callum 
it's Tom's bass player was doing bass. Rich was doing the drums. I was on keys. So, you know, we'd, we'd be like doing these double header shows, Tom Kill the Band and Darnell Cole. And again, that really worked out really well. Like a five week period, really heavy schedule. Yeah. But we had an absolute ball. Yeah. It was brilliant. <laughs> No, it's nice. It's it's nice when you know you say if you if you're getting along with the people as well, you oh, the, totally. the audience are responding well to it. Um, because we we've been booked at things before where we're either too heavy or not heavy enough. What is the name of your band? Uh, the original band I'm in is called Farron, F A H R A N. Is that metal? No, not at all. To be honest, it was very classic rock when we first started. Oh yeah, you've seen, you've seen my little the the only LP that exists of Farron. <laughs> oh. It's in here, yeah. But it's um, no, we were we were kind of more classic rock really, but we've gone a little bit more kind of alternative metal in places, but very melodic still. You know, kind of um, there's a lot of Alter Bridge influences and stuff, which I wouldn't say is particularly heavy. Heavy is it compared to no. your modern metal core and things like that? Every time something's classed as heavy next year, something heavier. You know, mm. it's like. I was just having this conversation the other day. Obviously, you know, when in the seventies when we were listening to Deep Purple and Priest and all that, that was heavy. If you listen to it now, yeah, it's not. Yeah, mm. so it's all relative. Oh, definitely. It is. When when I when I uh, when I cause I'll cross all sorts of different people when I'm traveling around, and I'll meet some people who are a lot older who are not into rock at all, and they will class late 60s early 70s kind of rock music as oh it's i don't like that thrash metal you know mm. i prefer gene pitney and things like that you know and it's not not that there's anything wrong with that it's just their taste you know but it's yeah. just bizarre how people and class heard things gene as... pitney doing no metal no, no. <laughs> that could be a cover i could I think, think about we doing could do, we could do some of that couldn't we have yeah. day now Growl, sample it in there growl a bit of 24 mm. hours from Tulsa yeah sure in with you. it's weird that I, the only reason I'm saying that as an example is because I, I sometimes go out and do uh, little solo shows and people said to me that certain songs that I sing I'll sound like Gene Pitney and I and I didn't even know really who he was at the time cause do you remember I, when they used this song for the advert which one? Because you're talking about 24 hours from Tulsa. Yeah, They yeah. changed it to 24 toasters from Scunthorpe and something like that. And it was a really <laughs> advert went on. It was in the, it, they did, they did. I can't remember what, it might be the 80s, but, but it, it did happen. It's It, it almost sounds as awful as the uh, Marks and Spencer status quo. Uh, really? That I've I don't know about this. Very recent. Uh, uh, we can trade adverts I'm a, here. I'm a, I, I absolutely love status quo and I've, Kind of just one of those people that accepts that bands change and evolve, and I don't get into comment yeah. arguments. I don't really care, you know. It's yeah. I'm just glad that something was created during a time, whether it be. I, I, I'm you, totally with you. Did you know about this? No, I do. <laughs> well, I do now. Marks and Clo. It's yes. uh, rocking all over the world, but they sing uh, "It's the best food in the world." Ah, is reason? Yeah, yeah. Like in the last month or two, or something it's like just, that. Uh, well, so it just popped up out of nowhere, and I thought. I, I just laughed to be honest because I'm, I'm into status quo because my dad was he was a big quo fan right. and I thought I thought if he was here now he wouldn't be he wouldn't be upset about it he wouldn't like it but he'd laugh his head off because it's just them just just that's the typical humour that they've got isn't it it's just, yeah. they don't take themselves too seriously and I yeah. think well, yeah one of them's dead though right Rick Parfit isn't that died uh, the Rick Parfit passed away yeah. probably, I could be wrong about 2016 yeah. he was yeah rhythm guitarist Alan Lancaster be Coming up to three years later away, this year, yeah. yeah. Uh, Francis Ross is still going with the 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 main kind of status quo, and then you've got John Coglan doing his own quo for a, a number of years. But I think mm. due to kind of getting older and things like that, he's kind of not there on the head. But I've seen he's doing like a different version of it now, and it's like almost I don't want to say jazz version, but I think that's kind of where it's oh, really? headed. Yeah, it's like a very chilled out version of it. And then his his the main guys that played in his band have gone out. I feel like it's called Quo Connection, and they're just they're doing a Quo tribute now, but with a different drummer to yeah. to John. So well, Brian Downey's doing a similar thing. He's got his band's called Live and Dangerous. So yeah, you know it's him with these young fellas. Yeah, you know playing Live and Dangerous. I saw Ten CC doing the same thing. You know, yeah, and... I did as well. It was superb. Yeah, it was. I mean, superb. Singing Donna a cappella. Yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah, God. I mean, beautiful. Check that out. <laughs> yeah. Really, it was dynamite. I was. At, I went to the uh, Robin in Bilston. Yeah. And I, 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 I was filming them just. You could, I could hear them 
from up front. It wasn't even could it, because they were just stood around one microphone. But yeah. it, my phone was picking it all up. I was that guy, you know, filming it. <laughs> Not all of it. I just because I'd seen them. I'd seen them playing, supporting someone else, and they'd done that version. I thought, oh, that's so good. But I couldn't get a good version on YouTube to enjoy. But there's there's plenty now because they've been doing yeah, it for yeah. a few years. Yeah. But there's a lot of bands doing that, isn't it? Look at Foreigner, you know the. There's Mick, Mick Jones is n- not really present on the shows anymore, so there's not anyone. When he feels like it. Yeah, but, but then I've read recently that he's he's quite ill at the moment, so he's well, not. I didn't know yeah, that. that well, I, I didn't know. I just thought I'm not really mm. sure why he's only playing on a few songs and then he disappears right. off stage. But apparently, um, I might be getting it wrong, so it could be. I think he said something like it's it's something like Parkinson's or something like okay. that. So, so it's I can too, understand. It's too that. taxing for him. Yeah. Yeah, understand. Yeah, and I mean he's. I think he's in his seventies as well now. He's got to well. be. Yeah, but things yeah. change. Things do change. Some people can't accept change. Yeah, and some can. And it's just like, well, if you don't accept it, well, hard cheese because yeah, it's, it's changed. Yeah. Well, it's just, you look at various examples from like bands like Journey. They yeah. completely changed, but people hated the fact that they are what they are now compared yeah. to the Steve Perry era. But there was a different era before that as well, yeah, which people it. loved. Certain people love that one as well. Fleetwood Mac did the same. Yeah. Up to speed, you're looking at bands like Bring Me the Horizon. They changed completely. Yeah. They're very pop in places and a bit kind of rap now. They I don't were know much about them. I, screamy I, metal I, when I they pretty, started. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I saw them <laughs> at download once. I know my daughter went to go see them very recently. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah I heard fill, them come in. Filling up kind of arenas and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, and uh, Ch- change is nothing new. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's weird because it, it's weird because it's like even when you look at a band like Quark, say Quo for example, yeah. certain people love that certain Frantic Four era. They hate the new version. When I call it new version, we're talking late eighties version. Oh, we're onwards. talking a long time. Yeah, and it's been going for it's been going probably longer than the yeah. the original. But people love certain people love the new stuff. Some people love yeah. the old stuff. Some people just love it all and. But you don't have to get upset about it and start shouting. Some some people just <laughs> I just think it's the nature of people that you know, they'll, they'll get head up about anything. So it just transcends into that. Yeah. And they'll have a good old rant about it too often. Yeah. You know, it's so what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing you've experienced this quite recently in recent years yeah. as well, because your yeah. band's gone through a lot of changes. A lot of changes. Well, so. Yeah. And I mean yeah, backlash. Yeah. You know, generally the same people. Yeah, you know, so it's it's like well, if you don't like it, then, you know, don't, you don't have to don't, watch it. Do you? Yeah, I guess it's, it, you know I mean? it's, it's every time like... every time a comedian brings out a Netflix special, people start having a bit of a moan online. Don't yeah. watch it. It it wasn't yeah. on. You went to click it to watch it, and there was yeah. there's usually warnings. You know, if you've got a certain kind of humour, don't. George yeah. Carl in the. Comedian. Oh, I used to love him. Yeah. <laughs> well, I still he do was the first, I think he, I think he kind of set the bar for being banned on the on the air, didn't he? <laughs> and he he said, well, the, the thing about the the radio station is is that you has two knobs on it, or three knobs or whatever it was, and one is to change the station, Indeed. one is to turn it on and off. Yeah. And you know, so yeah, you don't have to listen to it, do you? Yeah. People do get head up too much. Yeah, I think because when when you look at things from, you know. Maybe fifty, sixty years ago, there's been some some progression in terms of like not upsetting people. But then I think, to me, I mean, this this is where I could get backlash on my podcast. But it's like you could mm. certain things have gone too far now. Mm. People, people, people look actively look for things to hate or get offended by. <laughs> they, they hate certain yes. music. They hate a film. Don't don't watch it. Then it's fine. Yeah. You know, no one's no one's making you watch a TV series unless but, you've sat with Channel. Whatever on, <laughs> and just gone gone through five hours of it. Well, what I noticed was sort of you know, I, again, luckily I'm you know it's water off a duck's back to me, but it's almost like a, a group of people who feel more accepted if they're a part of the haters. So they yeah, can, yeah. they can all you know it's like protesting. Nickelback's a good example of well, that. There you go. You know what I mean? It's just like you know they, they probably felt they were alone in that hatred. Yeah, we've found more people who hate. I see so a lot of people. Part of it. Yeah, I see a lot of people commenting online, especially in recent years about Nickelback, for example. Yeah. And when they they'll say, "Well, I've always kind of really liked them, but all my friends hated them, so I didn't want to say that I did yeah. like them." So, yeah. and then as they've got older, they've realised it doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, if your friends don't like you because you like or dislike a certain band, 
they're not the knobheads. <laughs> you were always <laughs> all around with me about me liking the Spice Girls. Right? Spice Girls, yeah. yeah that's catchy knobheads, numbers. He never had a catchy numbers, with great gimmick. He didn't I like can't it. fault them, to be honest. <laughs> Listen, if you can write a good pop tune, I mean, obviously they didn't. I actually met the fella <laughs> who used to write for all those bands. You know, just this very normal chap. Yeah. And I used to deal in guitars. And, you know, he would get the gig to, to write the new Spice Girls album or Liberty X or whatever. Yeah, and he yeah. always bought a new guitar. For He didn't use anything he used before. That was, right. It was just his thing. And boy, this fella could I not go I should do that with my wife. So every time we write a new song, I've got to buy another guitar. I wasn't sure where you were going with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, what was that? You know, like, you never listen to a word I say, do you? Yeah, right, I should get another guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm I'm gonna keep quiet just in case she watches this because uh, yeah, there's deliveries every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> never, <laughs> nothing never, wrong with never that. hard evidence for those sorts. So of where things, where are you going? Why why are you clearing back at car out? I'm just just making some space and nipping out for an hour. <laughs> Where's my credit card? I think I'm up to forty seven now. Really? Yeah. So I think I had about. 18, 19 at one point, brothers. I feel that I was getting just for the sake of it. I think because I was younger and it was about how they looked. And as I've got older, it's not it's like, well, I'd rather just, I want it to play and sound nice. Plus, I, I think certain guitars look a certain way on different people. I had like a Kramer Jersey Star white one. And mm. I thought, I'm not glam enough for this. Yeah. It doesn't, it's a cool looking guitar, but it doesn't look cool on me. So no, I, I had totally to let agree. it go. I had to let it go. Yeah. Have you seen the new um, Gibson? Is it Gibson Garage in London, the new store? I've seen. I saw no, it. I've seen it, but I don't no, know anything no. about it. It's this amazing guitar store. They've got a similar one in uh, Nashville, mm. and they've just opened this one up in London. I've um, been to the one in out that way, but maybe not as fancy as it is now. Perhaps the, the one in London looks amazing. It's, it's, it's it, been it does open look like nice. a week or something. It looks yeah. amazing, doesn't it? I'm going to pop in when, really. I'm, when I'm. I'm when going I'm down London. there um, in a couple of weeks. We're going to see John Mayer. Yeah. Uh, for the second time. Um, and well, whilst we're in London, I think we'll uh, maybe... Every time anyone something. says his name, I just hear these like, nice, tre- nice, clean, strap and PRS oh, honestly, tones man, in my ear. <laughs> just such an amazing songwriter. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think he just kind of sees the world differently. He's just like a really interesting guy, a um, yeah. brilliant songwriter, as well as obviously a, an amazingly talented... He seems quite down to earth as well when you see him on interviews and things like that. Yeah. He was actually the first ever artist I heard on YouTube. My friend showed me oh, really? YouTube in 2006. He went, Remember the found, this, found this website and it play, it's got everything on it. And I'm like, what website? And <laughs> it turned, turned it to his house, yeah. <laughs> and we were like, what the hell was this? I mean, kids now were thinking, you absolute dinosaurs. But it were like, wow. And he showed me uh, Back to You by uh, John Mayer. And I was like, this site's awesome. Whoever that is is awesome. I don't know who that guy is. I need more of it in my life. So then next minute, I'm just completely binging everything I think on like YouTube. The, that earlier stuff was more kind of pop-oriented. Where uh, I think like his more recent stuff is more um, kind of singer-songwritery. Um, or they had that like an Americana type phase. But yeah. like the you know, the the first show that I saw him I was at Manchester Arena. Um, it was just incredible. I mean, the production was amazing. Um, his performance was incredible. And we were like um, four or five seats from the stage. And um, he kind of it was going through sort of slow dancing. And oh. it, it kind of literally turned to where we were sat and just kind of walked forward and started playing the solo for it. And it's like, <laughs> cracky. <coughs> this is amazing. <laughs> He's so capable of doing, you know, you, you can knock out some blues, but then I heard a couple of songs uh, in the last couple of years that, that they almost sounded a little bit 80s, in, but in it was yeah. a bit kind of poppy in places as yeah. well. But yeah. again, I don't really know what to categorise it as, but should I? Don't. Does it matter? Don't. Just, I just say, I just yeah, like that. that vibe, <laughs> he's, he's done like a country type album, and he's say that kind of 80s type vibe. Yeah. Um, such an amazing artist. I think the, the thing that we've seen in a couple of weeks is like his uh, acoustic show. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's going to be an arena and John Mayer with a guitar. And that'll just be brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> so looking forward to it. Yeah, I, I, I can sit. I mean, some people, they, it doesn't do anything for them, does it? To sit there, they want it all. They, really? What, just sitting. Oh, well, I don't like him at all. Oh, him in general. You don't yeah. like John Mayer? Uh, no. Could you sit and watch a solo singer? 
Oh yeah. With a guitar if, if, on their own for ninety minutes. Yeah. If it was, oh, if yeah. it's not John no Mayer, problem. then. If it's not John Mayer, yeah, yeah. Well, if it wasn't, I could think of a few other people who would not yeah. know him. Yeah. But there are people that, that they don't even like that, regardless of if it was someone you know. I don't know. For example, someone that's a massive Lady Gaga fan doesn't want to sit and watch Lady Gaga on a piano for ninety minutes. I'd well, love I, it. I would. I'd absolutely. love it. In fact, was it, I sort of went to. Um, <laughs> We saw Tyler Childers uh, a couple of weeks ago in Manchester, right. and part of that show was an acoustic set. Yeah, uh, and uh, again, just amazing. You know, this guy just kind of captivates an, an audience. Um, again, amazing songwriter, uh, great player. Really pr- privileged to have seen him play live, and um, that was a great part of the show. I don't know if it's just it might just be me personally, but I like when they when it, when, it, when they are on their own, guitar, piano, vocal. Yeah tiny tiny bit of reverb and they're not always kind of sticking to the time signatures as well and they're just doing everything by feel and letting the audience yeah. respond between you know leaving space yeah, between things like that, that to me to, especially if they can come back with a really great you note know, afterwards hair on end obviously well, only on the know, arms totally. it, hel- <laughs> it helps if you're a fan yeah so yeah. you know it, you know if you're just going in cold you don't know but yeah, yeah I, you know, I'm a big fan of that like Steve Earl whether it's the band or him or him just with a mandolin, or or Ryan Adams, yeah. Or I mean, we could go on. Yeah, yeah. But you know, some some people can really, really do it, beautif- yeah. beautifully. You know, and say like Terry Reid, just mm. you know, you're just sitting there, you're taking off into a different plane. You know. Yeah. But I did uh, get invited to the Albert Hall once to see um, Elvis Costello and Steve Naive, and uh, by the record company and. At front row, right in front of them, like you're there in the piano. Yeah. And it was this jazz hell. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, listen, I love Elvis Costello, <clears throat> but this, and it was three hours, and I just knew if I'd stood up and left, it would be very noticeable. Oh, yeah. And it was torture. Do you have a kid? No, I just, I, <laughs> you know. You know, I'm not. I'm not wanting to criticise. I'm just saying, you know, the good and bad. Yeah, yeah. But that, that was memorably awful. It's got to be a thing, hasn't it? We <laughs> memorably awful. <laughs> hey, not to everybody else, but just yeah. to me personally. Maybe they should put that on the poster for the next <laughs> tour. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, um, I feel like I'm still there. <laughs> <laughs> I can appreciate the the musical abilities, but there's certain. I mean, there's people out there that completely get off on like progressive jazz, jazz fusion, and things like that. But there's, and I can I can enjoy certain parts of it. But there's certain things. We we went somewhere in uh, Marrakesh at the early early this year, and we got recommended to go to a place called the Jazz Cafe. There was a band going to be on. We were having something to eat, and the music they were playing it were all kind of smooth at first. And I thought, oh, this is nice. It's quite all right. And then, and then did it start? Then something, some, something come in, and I. It made me stressed. I was really like yeah. anxious. I was like, yeah. I can't even tap my foot to it because I don't know where the where beat is, and it keeps changing. Like every two bars, it's changing. Even and if you, even if you had three feet, yeah, you, 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 you couldn't find the one. I was just going to throw myself down the stairs. I, I I like, what, what's... The old jazz, the dance old jazz, sounds great. Whether you know that sort of stuff, I I, I yeah. can listen to that. I can even listen to people like I don't know. I mean, it's supposed to be just territory. People like Glenn Miller are in there and all that. I oh, can yeah, even course. listen to that. I was listening to it the other morning actually, not because I thought, oh, I'm going to get him listen to Glenn Miller today. It's because someone had taken the piss about him going missing. I'll tell you what it was. It was an episode of Red Dwarf. Right. And I thought <laughs> I was looking at it and I thought I'm going to listen to it. So I did. Yeah, and it was really good. I love all. That. I can. I like that sort of stuff. But that crazy. Yeah, that's that. No, you know. Right, I think I, I it was because. Was. Everyone, it sounded like everyone was trying to play a solo at once in this moment. Learn. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I like when if something's all a little bit weird and wonderful, and you think sounds like a wrong note, but it kind of works. And but or you know that sounds that weird offbeat or something like that. You know whatever it is that whoever's doing their part, but everyone else seems to give them a minute to shine. But this just had a good two minutes of absolute chaos and it was just it, it just sounded like a, a school band on the first rehearsal yeah but horrible. obviously it was some well produced track horrible but yeah I, I mean it's all about context isn't it but like when you um like another one of my kind of favorite artists is um marcus king and he you know he brings in like his jazz background into some of his solos and it just kind of 
it, it does lift the music. Oh yeah, there's, you know, there's no there's no wrong with it. It's, 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 yeah, yeah, it's not like because I, I know that there's people that you know really go I hate jazz. It's not true. You can't fundamentally hate it because <laughs> it's, it's in too much stuff. Even if you don't know it, is it is there? Oh yeah, there's always mm. a weird technical part in a song. You think that's a bit jazzy, or or, or a mistake that's been cloaked as a jazz. Part. I was just talking about that particular <laughs> awful evening. <laughs> <laughs> the therapy helped. Yeah. <laughs> it was the fact I couldn't escape. Yeah, that yeah, because it, it's like being front row of a comedy show, isn't it? You yeah. you're going nowhere really. Yeah. You're going to get picked on. Yeah. Mm. And obviously, because you've been invited, you yeah, know the people. Was, yeah, the whole shebang. It's more of an insult as well. It, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was, that's, I'm saying that was the thing. It was just like, oh, okay. See, if you'd, have, if you'd have had a few more glasses of wine, you probably wouldn't have cared then. You'd just stumble out. Could have crawled out. I know. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we digress. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, we're talking about the uh, the Hearts and Souls songs that's coming up. So... You, you're working on those. Are you doing those bit by bit at the moment? Then what's the we, what's the plan recording wise in terms of what were plans? Huh? Um, There's we, no plans. Well, we, we, we go <laughs> with whatever we have. Pla- well, we do. We don't. We we do things as, as sometimes because right. There's been another unusual event that occurred recently. Right. It all centres around the Bolognese, which which is the truth. <laughs> so we had been. You, yeah, you were with us from the beginning of the Ange- right. Okay, yeah. so do you, did you want to know the actual? Yeah, I yeah. can tell you some like you... bullshitty story that's really fantastic. I can just say the honest one, which is quite impressive because of how how truly daft it is. Yeah. Okay, so I've got a missus. She's got kids, and they basically torture me. Yeah. For pleasure. That, um, that just sounds like kids in general, mm, to be honest. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> they have a cousin, an older cousin, <laughs> and her name is Angeli. Except they don't say it like that. There's something right. about the timing of how I say Angelie that they disagree with. Right. So years, this has gone on for, I mean, years. I've been told, you, so you don't say it right, you don't say it like that, you don't say it right, you don't say it like that. That's not how you say that name, Luke. No, you don't say that name. We should you just not call her that. I mean, I've just, the mum, tell him, just don't. So, <laughs> I said, listen, right, if he does shut up about going on about this name, I'll write a song about it. Okay. So I did. So, did it work? Well, this is what we're doing. So, we I wrote the lyrics to the track, and then I wrote the music to the track, thereabouts, and put it together. He came round one time, don't know what we were doing, but he was there. I said, "Listen to this." I said, "Think so." So, but in the meantime, there's a bloke that I know who used to play with a lot of established bands in the seventies called Headley, and he said. There's a bloke I know, and he, he used to work with Bowie and people, and, but not like later, but early era stuff. Mm. And he did, I, I can't remember the list. He did all sorts of stuff. He was like, not just in rock, he worked with bands like the House Martins and stuff. Anyway, so I, we sent our drummer, Jimmy, to Beverly, was it? Somewhere like that, Beverly, I think it was, yeah. And we sent him off to do the drums, because we knew what the track was, because we'd written the track. And we, this is, once the drums are down, and this one slowly drags me into the into the light of the fact that we live in the technology. He tells me about it, but don't beat me over the head about it. But he says, this can be done, Luke, you know. <laughs> it's like when I got introduced to WhatsApp, it took a couple of weeks, man. But, you yeah, know, yeah. I understood that there's other people who talk back. Because, you know, it's just, yeah, you know, I, I learned in the end. I'm doing good with it now. I, I send him all sorts, don't I? Yeah, you probably wish he'd never show me now, guess, I'm guessing you regret it. So, oh, I deleted it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's nothing. The key is not to let your phone back things up that yeah, people yeah, send you. Because yeah, yeah, it can yeah, get yeah. quite embarrassing when yeah, you flip through your phone. Yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Three months. That sort of so, the, the, um, the bottom line was is that uh, Jimmy done the drums and we were looking at the possibility of different recording methods. He has done all sorts in all sorts of different ways and had got was up to speed on it, as was him. So we'd started to put an idea t- together for what we'll, we'll try to schedule things and to start recording this track, which we were on the absolute cusp of doing, weren't we, you and I? Yep. We were, I was going to come round and he was going to show me how this works. Anyway, I go... To a, uh, I go to a, a, an Italian cafe. It's really not very fancy. 
and there are girls, women, in there, um, and and you know they talk to you, and they talk to me about music, not in any serious way, and one of the girls said, "There's a man who comes in here, and he 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 uh, he's he he he's an old boy, but he he plays music, and this that, and the other." And I was very polite to them, thinking it was somebody who probably like swept the floors at the local, you know, studio or just somebody who was talking. Weeks went by, and then after Christmas, I went in, and basically, where I was a note that had been left in the till for me, and it was Roy Orbison's drummer. So, yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> and I was like, all oh, right, okay. So uh, that's a bit different. First person there, I, I spoke to him about. It, I spoke to him about. It. Anyway, it turns out he's eighty odd years old, and he has a little studio. So he listened to our little EP through the girls and that and all that and we were like right okay so we we went to his we went and we recorded two days ago with Roy Orbison's drummer he's called Rob Monday ah. and with him and we did it all together and we did the track so the joke with the kids turned into being produced by him and recorded by Roy Orbison's drummer which I think is not a bad day really yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you've and, got to get that uh, angst out somewhere. It's, you can't it's really it. yeah, slip yeah, it out yeah, all in the these kids' things. But it did start out like that, legitimately. But I did like the name Angelou. That's the truth. I did like the name though, um, and it's spelt unusually because it's Hindu, although yeah. they're not. They're but it's not a typical Grandad common Bush name, is it? Hindu. So it's uh, something. It's, it's like yeah, it's just to spell it. It just means I'm going to spell it wrong all the time. My soul is just. I mean, I spell most things wrong, but that's definitely. Good I don't know if there's a song that's with that name because there's a lot of girls' names. Tight, you know, titles, isn't there, for songs? Yeah, yeah. So it's hard, really, to um, yeah. to pick one out. So we've had that. So we've recorded that, and then we're going to... He, hopefully, he's got some plans, and I'm not going to shoot with a big mouth if I can get it all wrong. Yeah. So, if, <laughs> yeah. So, because I'm, I'm good at that. Because he'll be like, no, it's, we're not doing that. It's not him. Not there. So, I, I, but he has ideas for what we're going to do with the, getting the... Everything is recorded, but it's... That's it. Yeah. So. Well, no, basically, because um, I'm, you know, my band, we're, we're just finishing off our new album. Just, a, you know, a few things left to do and everything. Yeah. But, you know, we we get it mixed in Sweden. at a Lemon Studios by Martin Eklund. And we've done three albums with him. He knows us. Yeah. We know him. You know, we don't need to be there. So I want to get that track recorded by him as well because the format's the same two guitars piano you know yeah you know he's in a band called bonafide oh yeah yeah, yeah you know he's a bass player you know rock and roll band it's all of the same mindset thinking you know i can speak to him directly talk through everything it just makes life so much easier that's yeah you know day. so uh that's the plan with that and then we'll send it off to mastering if it don't get done there. We've got a guy who does mastering. Yeah. yeah. Interesting guy. Yeah. And I really can't say, speak highly of him enough in a lot of respects. He's called Tim. Tim right. Thomas. And he, um, I suppose it all depends on whether you actually, how much you like things or, or whether you're doing it just to say, well, I've put it to tape, you know. And it <laughs> was, um, he does a, he does a, uh, it takes digital sound and he's really good at, at like doing like some sort of hybridy thing where it sounds quite, you know, authentic. So if you want your music to be mastered, yeah, in a, st a way that isn't necessarily like sending it to Abbey Road or some studios or somewhere to make it sound ambiently old, <laughs> Tim Thomas is good at doing that stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So what's the the plan for the release then? Uh, is there anything you can tell? Uh, I mean, it's difficult, isn't it? When sometimes a little while, we, the, we 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 need. We need to get some shows sorted out, which we're going to. This yeah. is the next thing on the agenda, and I would like to get a manager. Yeah. Mm. Yes. <laughs> and that is the next thing that he we will be. How you fix together. Paul? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not my bag. Yeah, it's not what he no, does. No, you know, I know what I do. And I'll do that. I think management in any industry is just no. You just want to smash your head against the wall. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that I'm averse to it. It's just you know personally, I've got. I, I wouldn't take something on that I couldn't give a hundred percent to. Yeah. And you know, with everything I'm doing, stretch yourself too thin. It, yeah. it, it just wouldn't be fair on the on the band. 
you know, I help in every way I can yeah. outside of the, you know, the studio production. Mm, and that's, you know. that's absolutely never a true word spoken there. He <laughs> does know. do as he says he will do. So, but as a, far as like making that commitment that's not for me yeah yeah you know, you know not that i don't believe or anything it's just it just wouldn't be fair because i couldn't i couldn't commit well you've got your own but, things going on haven't you yeah, so it's, yeah. it's and as we know and, it's time and, consuming and, and, <laughs> but, but as i said and there's other projects just just come in now that i've got to dedicate a lot of time to so yeah, yeah. you got management with foreign uh, we well just before lockdown we got in with um, a company called Nine Lives who um, we've been trying to get in with for a while mm-hmm. um, and to be fair they do kind of kick us into shape and then during lockdown we said like we'll touch base when all this is over we've mm-hmm. got an album to get on with and we only kind of really got back in touch back end of last year and they actually said oh we, we'd actually thought you'd split up so mm-hmm. um been various calls back and forth recently because we've just shot a video for our new album. Um, there's all the posts are kind of getting scheduled to go out. In the, you know, in the, in the coming months, we're, we're just going to start doing some more dates again, March, April. Because um, really, it's, it's kind of me that has to do all the bookings and stuff like that. Well, it's like that, which, isn't it? When absolute you're, you're thankless task. Yeah, you thankless know, you, task. You, sort of through your management, <laughs> you, if you you know wanting like a booking agent, a promoter, you know, somebody yeah. who can just you know, do the PR and that. I, I would happily do kind of manage the band and, well, just continue doing what I'm doing, but I would love to just pass things over to um, a booking agent. Yeah. Mm. I'm not even interested in having a label. I mean, unless one come along and promise the earth and kept to the word, then fair enough, but it doesn't, it's few and far between these I don't days. know what the relevance of, I don't think they, they hold the sway that they once did because of the nature of how things have changed, I would imagine. Massively, yeah. You know, That's why, I, for he, me, he, if he, it was he, a... He tells you that to tell you the tales of, of yesteryears with record companies, what you know, you know. How long you got? Uh, mm. yeah. I think as well though, but like when you look at bands, seventies, eighties bands, and before and things like that, you know, l- labels could take a massive chunk, but there would still be something left. Yeah. Whereas now there's not a big pie to take a slice from anyway. It seems to me that the the the, the, the trade off was is that now you've got the axe, you have you have the exp- any well you can you can bang on a bang on that pot couldn't you and record it and stick it on Spotify if you wanted it yeah. you know you can you would you Jacob could Collier would probably make yeah, something yeah, amazing yeah, out of that pot to be honest with you you know again you know what I mean it's like not everything's the same it depends what deal you make yeah you know like in anything you know, not just the music industry in anything you know what I mean yeah so it's like if you make the right decision at first and you, you know the, the deal works for you the yeah. record company that's great. But, yeah. you know, again, you know, in the 80s, you know, I would have signed anything to make a record. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, like anybody who's just, you know, starving in London just to get your first foot on the ladder. But the system was different then. Yeah. Of getting signed, etc. And okay, you know, you know, we signed some really rubbish deals, but who didn't? Yeah, you yeah. Know, that was your first Oh, there's, there's so many... Like huge artists now that oh. talk about how much money they got ripped off. I could tell you, started. I could tell you inside <laughs> stories that would blow your chops off. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? From, straight from the horse's mouth. Yeah. Is but, there any you're allowed to tell me? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and it was like, the, um, well, Sabbath, for, for instance, basically their manager, right? They were making, you know, a lot of money, but they were, you know, they're out their nuts. Right, you know, just young fellas, mm. you know, wondering why they still lived, you know, in the bedroom they'd been in since they were twelve, and every time they, you might have brought up a little, you know, by the way, you know, got no money, you know, a Ford Cortina would arrive, whoa, fantastic, and all that. So <laughs> then the manager, I'm not naming names here, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, but uh, he set a finance a finance company up. And said to them, with, with their money, and said, "Right then, here's the deal. You, look, you you can all get houses, but you need to borrow money from this finance company to get a mortgage and buy the house." So basically, they borrowed their own money, oh, God. and paid it back at interest. <laughs> and to the to this day, like you know, like you know, they don't get royalties off those early albums. 
yeah. all, all gone. It's not in the way. Yeah. Because I saw a lot of something about cause Def Leppard re-recorded a lot of songs, didn't they? Yeah. And was that, that was purely to do with royalties. Everybody does the same now because, you know, and it's it's not so much that. It's Again, it depends on the deal. You, you know, we just re-recorded a little bit of what you fancy because, you know, fair enough, EMI will never give it up because it was never recouped. Yeah. You see? So, you know, you, you, you can't sell it. You can't make any money off it, not. So, I, th- I mean, I actually think it was like Simply Red who started the trend with that. You know, he figured it out. Well, if I re-record it, you know, because they don't own the songs, they own the recordings. Yeah, yeah. Right? So then, you you know, you've got it add in your possession. Mm. So, there's always a way. <laughs> God, I'd be, I'd be just so frustrated. When you look at, like, Kate Bush recently, you know, we, she obviously didn't get as much as she wanted to get the first time round on running up that hill, and then yeah. obviously... A lot of time has passed, and obviously, depending on what the agreement is, certain companies. I think is. Am I right that the royalties go back to you after a certain amount of time or a certain amount of sales? And then, obviously, she's had a huge influx of sales because of uh, Stranger Things on that song, and suddenly made more money now. Yes, yeah. well, it's, I've not again, watched it's, it, but it's, it's, it's a it's Netflix too thing. It's it's one of the first lessons of great disappointment when you realise how the pie chart works out. <laughs> Right, you know, you know, like le- lessons in rock and roll of like, you know, we've made a record, way. Yeah. Right, and then you see how it's actually, you know, it works out. Um, but you know, again, that's old school going. You know, fair enough. The record company stumped up the money, but far too much money was spent making records back in those days. Yeah. You know, but it was just how it was. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can. You don't have to spend that much money now. So, yeah, I, I watch um, a guy on YouTube, uh, Rick Beato. Yeah. yeah. Just, just learned so much from watching. I, mean, I watched something and he was chatting with a guy recently about how much they would charge record companies for, for it's the same way that a venue would. Like they'll go, oh, we're going to, this is hired in and this is hired in. That amp's hired in. Even though it's not, it's something that he owns. But oh, it's, yeah. You know, they'll say, you know, we need to get a do whatever rectifier in, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's gonna be, that's going to be another $500 and this and that. Yeah. And same as costings for venues when you play a show. People think that, oh, well, it's this much a ticket. Uh, promoter's going to take a certain percentage, so that must all be for the band. No, no, no. There's, before it even goes to even the, the crew, it's you. You're the, they're charging you for the crowd barrier, for the PA, yeah. the lights. Lesson and... number two in the disappointment of rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have uh, a lot of my friends, they'll, they'll see when like certain times with different projects, they'll go, oh, you were playing in this certain place, or playing this, and that, that's, that looks amazing. You're doing, you're doing right well. Yeah. You must not be far off buying a Ferrari. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, there was, there, was a, there was an article in the magazine, uh, um, and they did this great big thing of working out how much an, you know, an artist earns a night. So they, they did those mathematics without any research into it. And I read it that I was earning £7,000 a night. <laughs> so I read it, but I, <laughs> I certainly wasn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's just, it's a, everything's a misconception. You know? Oh, definitely. Nothing comes for free. Yeah. I think I, I, I've i got a friend who's a, he's a massive Van Halen fan, and he was talking about in their early years that, like, neither of them had much more than a few hundred dollars in no. the bank. But they were touring the world, playing yeah. massive shows, partying, yeah. travel, arriving in limos, because that's all paid for, but that's to keep them sweet by the fact that they don't have to worry about what's in the bank, because they never have to... Shell out for everything. Yeah. Everything, everything's free. <laughs> well, I, you know, I obviously know firsthand what Def Leppard were earning when we thought they were big. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And it's not what you would expect. Yeah, I think Bruce Springsteen mentioned something about like on the tour for Born to Run, they still had no money. Yeah, but they were playing stadiums and <laughs> yeah, you know, was, selling out the, night I, after I, night. Yeah, I, I know a little bit, uh, not too much about that, but I know that. There was a point with Springsteen, with the, when before he wrote the big one, uh, you know, with, um, that it was something to do with the crossover from being, because it started out as um, the greetings from Asbury Park, 
which is Bruce Springsteen, not Clarence, mm. right, so to speak. And um, there was a, there was there was something that went on between the transfer over uh, of of a record deal with Springsteen um, before that album, and and I believe that had he not of compromised on whatever it was that he had to do at the time, then history would have been rewritten because they would have they, that was it. He that was the end of it. He either did it then, or nothing was going to happen, and he would have, there would have been no Bruce Springsteen, and then that, then he knocked out Born to Run, which is quite a good move really. But 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 the pre <laughs> but in those months and weeks, because a lot of time went into that record that you're talking about there, mm. and um and then and, and and that's that's the kind of little little bit I know about it that that, that it was uh, that really was like. I mean, obviously, not necessarily that it was going to be as big as it was, yeah. but it really, he really was in a position whereby it were like, look, kid, you know, you were meant to be the next Bob Dylan and you're not, you know, so so either do something about it or, <laughs> or there's no more money for you when it's home time. Mm. Yeah, the uh, I, I I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use Quo as an example again, just because it's something I know a lot more about. But it's like when they did their kind of splitting up, you know, mid '80s, and then. The record company come knocking and said, "You owe us an album, or we're going to sue you." So they only got back out for that. And I, when I was a kid, and I'm watching those on the videos on VHS on the top load of videos and things like that, and and I'm just, you know, head banging away, and I'm just enjoying life and enjoying music, and not I've got no knowledge of anything to do with that because like when I first got into bands, I was about sixteen, and very quickly ended up being in bands with guys that were older than me just because they were just better musicians really uh but they'd done a lot and i and i learned a lot from them and quite a lot of the times that they, they, you just get a lot of guys saying oh the first things to split bands up is women and money obviously yeah, 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 you know yeah, yeah. obviously you know there's a lot more women in bands and stuff you know in rock bands and things like that now so obviously it'd be men and money in their in their circumstances but yeah. relationships and money yeah. just completely this, ruin all this this beautiful it's, art for me. It's a well trodden path. Yeah, yeah, basically. But the thing is, not everything. You know, like it's almost sort of like going on the, the negative side of it. Music will always exist. Yeah. Right now, the, the, what I find about it fascinating, you know, because we're all in the right in the, the happy center of it. You know, that's, that's all I do. Right. You know, maybe it's just me, but you know, I don't despair because it's it's, it's always a way mm. to get it out there and get the band back on the road and everything because there has to be. Yeah. You know, you know, it's like I always say: if you can get it, if you can dig a tunnel out of coldness with a knife and fork, you know, you can you can make this work. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen a lot. Of, uh, I mean. Uh... Even in the last kind of like 10, 15 years and stuff, I mean, I'm, I've been doing kind of like live shows maybe 22-ish years, something like that, and and I've seen so many bands kind of coming out of the woodwork again now. And I don't know if it's circumstances because, because of streaming and things like that, or there's, there's, there's not money in certain ways, so they're coming out live and that, but all the things that kind of stopped them in the past, they, they've just kind of just cut ties with every company that was involved that were taking a bite of the cherry whatever you want to call it and they've just got out there and they're, and they're making it work like you say you know i, yeah. I, I um oh God, i think i played a gig once with kajagoogoo like um <laughs> oh, I, I maybe was 20 ish maybe a little bit older i don't know and they'd just come back out of nowhere and 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 they made it work yeah. and they were selling places it weren't as big as it were obviously when they were much more known in the eighties and stuff like that, but mm, we 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 rushed alongside some of that in one of the bands I used to play in the blues bands when they started to do the only because we'd end up at the same holiday camps, but they were, mm. they, were they, they they started that it was probably then, you know <laughs> they, well this they, they no because they started to do the package tours didn't they like yeah, they used yeah. to do the silver sixties tours but I think most people from that era are kind of the old boys the crooners that a lot of them died but they do the same thing with the eighties stuff don't they they put them together and it, 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 it's massive yeah it's huge. Well, they, I mean, it's 
different style but when you you look at like the 90s and all the what i class as manufactured pop groups it goes steady with that because you were start talking about them doing the little reunion that puts us in a bit of a yeah. <laughs> so, the, so, I like, so i like picking on him you know all your <laughs> <laughs> all your you know your your bands like blue and a1 and sure. basically mm-hmm. thing bands and stuff that looked and sounded like take that but they're not as big still mm. and so they'll just they'll Put them all in a room that mm. take that would film on the film mm. fill it on their own mm. and they'll have maybe mm-hmm. six of them doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, five go out. I think there's like three of them now, but they're still called five because it's the band name. But you know, but the, like you say, it, you're making it work because they're the ones that want to do it. Like, you know, like in America, <laughs> yeah. we we just did that. You know, the two and a half month tour, but it's you know, it's a three oh, band man. bill. You know, enough's enough. Choir yeah. boys and bad marriage. And you know, it's just you use the same back line, yeah, you know, the same truck, everything. And it works. Yeah. You know, it's it's just it's helping it's, each other, aren't you, as well? Absolutely, you know, same crew. Just it's one bit it's one big, you know, happy family. Yeah. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah. And so you know, that that was the but it's the same with Def Leppard. It's Def Leppard journey cheap trick. It's still a package. Yeah. No matter what level it's at you know you have to adapt to the situation yeah i i understand and like you're saying these these are much bigger bands than what we're what oh, like yeah. we're talking about and it's like like you said but i've seen you know like your foreigner journey white snake yeah. together or sticks is on there i've seen yeah. the journeys doing one with cheap trick and yeah i mean for me i mean i love journey's music yeah the last time i went to see them I didn't really enjoy it so much because it felt like all the guitar solos were extended for a long time which some people might really enjoy but it kind of took away from playing was, for the song for me it wasn't the song it wasn't for me yeah, yeah. Um, if I want to do that I'll just go and watch Steve Vai all night or whatever or, or yeah. just for me I mean I think Neil Sean's an amazing guitar player obviously yeah. a great writer I haven't seen everything. him once but it was great I saw him at Donington not Donington the other thing download and yeah. he was beautiful but yeah, I enjoyed it. I was surprised actually. In fact, yeah. I lost my mind a bit with Conan. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> I just, fun, I just think yeah. that like if if got a bit fruity. if you want to do that, I mean, this is my personal opinion. There's probably loads of people that didn't notice a difference, didn't care. They're just loving the fact that they were there. Uh, but I think maybe just set up a solo project if you want to do a little bit of widdly yeah. widdly for a bit longer, because yeah. people love that type of music and that band because they love the hooks and yeah. you know it it's it takes some it's like a little story isn't it you know they they, mm-hmm. they love they love it for that and m- most people don't want four minutes at the end of open arms shredding when it's just supposed to be this really little tasteful thing because it's quite a delicate little song isn't it you know so i don't know yeah. you can get to a point where maybe you you're that big Indulgence. you can just feel like you just want to do what you want to do and no one's there to tell you well, what you know, to probably, say no. like I, said, I, was just, I was just highlight, highlighting the parallel of the higher echelons down to the club level of the package thing yeah you know it works yeah oh definitely so that, you know again that's another thing that's come about yeah to make it work well i would consider going to the journey thing again because cheap tricks on exactly because i love cheap tricks yeah. so they're amazing man I one of my most favorite bands ever cheap trick yeah. yeah, 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 love them. Absolutely love Cheap Trick. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw them once at the Cavern. Yeah? Yeah, they played the one-off show. And I can't remember how we got in or whatever, but we did. <laughs> me, and, me, and my mate, me and my mate Q. <laughs> but when we... When, 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 what, they, they, they filmed it. I don't know why it's never been released, but it was all filmed. They had right. cameras. His mate everywhere. that filmed it. <laughs> His mate that filmed it, right? Okay, then. But we, but, uh, and I, we thought I knew him, so it wasn't a, a blag for him. And, uh, and I, but the, for whatever reason, I don't know why, I, I turned round and the guitar player had come off the stage. He must have gone through some of the wireless and that, and they must have and I turned around and he stood behind me with like a, at the bar. Yeah. Like an eight, eight, the, the whole, you know, the eight, nine neck guitar doing, it wasn't surrender, <laughs> but they were doing something and I thought it was, I thought it was brilliant and after I got to say hello to him and that was it, but, um, yeah, but. Uh, and was he a nice guy? He looks like a nice guy. Very nice. He'll have met him, met him, I said hello, I'm, yeah, I don't yeah. have a story about <laughs> him. It was a coincidence that he happened to be stood behind where we were. But just smashing people. Yeah? Yeah. I've never met any other ones like Xander or whatever. I I 
I've got, like played various festivals where we tend to be like right at the bottom of the bill where the tiny writing and then there's people around that I've thought like oh well, mm. I'd love to go and say hello to them and then I'm just think I don't want them to not be a nice person and then it really like tarnishes my like yeah love for their music and everything like that like my my dad always said he says I, i'd never want to meet status quo yeah, because well, I think he says if the if the knobheads i'd hate the, it the, the expression is trust the art <laughs> not the artist isn't it you know because i think that people have invested that kind of believe that whatever the contents of this song is is it represents that person mm. and not necessarily you know uh because it wouldn't ne- the lyrics aren't necessarily written for by that person um like some people make only come up with their own emotions and write it down. Mm. People like Bowie used to have a computer that used to spit lines out and he put things in it and he'd chop stuff up and chuck it in a bucket, wouldn't it, and all that and take it out and put them all together and go, Oh wow, what's this? You know. Oh really? Didn't know uh, that. Yeah, yeah, he did he had a, he, I know he had, that in he had AI before everybody he else. Then. I don't think it was an AI, it was like a word processor thing, you know. And it <laughs> and it would and it would and it would give him options. He used, he started out cutting lines out of magazines and it moved on to something that he had built. And it's and it was a computer, and the computer would would regurgitate things that were put into it in different orders, and that's how we wrote things. So, I wouldn't strictly, you know, think, you know, when when Bowie's singing about some of the later things he did with the dance music and all that, like you know, bye bye love, hello space boy, moon dust will cover you. I don't know, man. You know, maybe maybe it really was just just a lot of nutty stuff that he put in. <laughs> Do we think there were some substances helping that along the way? I don't know. Maybe. I wouldn't imagine by that point. I think he was. <laughs> I think he saw. I think I think he packed that in. I don't understand, but I didn't. You know, I didn't know David Bowie. Mm. But all I know is, is it's just a good, good maybe a good point to say that it doesn't necessarily mean that that person's coming from the. You know, it's like yeah, they're creating yeah. something. Fair enough. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's how they think. Oh, definitely. You know? Well, I, 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 I write songs sometimes from other people's perspective as mm. if I'm them and how I think they're thinking mm. uh, and I wouldn't like people to think that they were, it was me and my thoughts you know uh, or an interpretation of something that I got on something because I just certain I mean I think I talked about it in a previous episode I'd, uh, I wrote a song about uh, an actual real life murderer from his perspective of the experiences that he had yeah. growing up to become what he became. And mm-hmm. I wouldn't want people thinking that that was me. <laughs> you know? yeah. It was like, yeah. We'll, we'll always remember, right, Sting walking on the moon. He hasn't been to the moon. No. <laughs> no. Right? So, you know, no. he, he kind of set this, the precedent. Yeah. You know I, mean? so. I bet the Venger boys have been to a beef, though. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> no, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, there's artists out there. Like, I love... Um, I love like Beth Hart and stuff, and the, and, the, and she writes some very honest music about her, her personal struggles, and and you really feel that coming through. And I think it's great when people can do that. Um, but yeah, you can't just assume that every single song they write is no. about mm-hmm. themselves and about no. something that they're thinking. Yeah, yeah. Some, some things are just an observation. Definitely. So uh, before we start kind of winding this down, I want I wanted to ask some questions about like music gear and stuff like that just because I've, I've done a couple of episodes recently with, uh, with uh, some people and they we we've not really taught gear and i feel like i need to scratch that itch we can and, do and that. You, you guys would be great for that go on then yeah who's starting where you look you look like you're ready so. <laughs> no 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 i'm like i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna hide behind west because he knows everything about gear i thought you were he gonna knows everything i thought you were gonna jump up then oh. <laughs> he knows everything about equipment. Yeah, so he knows all about my back. Well, I don't know, you. You tell him. Uh, well, yeah, in fact, yeah. So yeah. we'll, we'll talk. We'll, we'll t- talk about the uh, the gear used for for the band for for recording for what you're using live and things like that. Because um, I have I have some musicians that that like to check out what's going on. Yeah. On here, so. so what's he want to know about first? Then for recording. Anything you want to tell recording, me? Recording. We've used studios for the main part, haven't we? Apart from the yeah, Lord, but my parts have always bit. been done remotely. Um, I've recorded um, plenty. I've recorded um, um, most of well, the upcoming Tom Kilner album was all recorded remotely. Yeah. Um, I use a VST on a uh, on my PC um, with a MIDI keyboard hooked up. You know, it's just a Roland stage piano. You just use it for the MIDI yeah. into the VSTs. And I've uh, recorded entire albums. 
again, the one coming up for Tom, the stuff that I recorded for Hearts and Souls was on VSTs. Um, did an album with a, um, a country artist from London, uh, Jack Browning. Um, hmm. the, the album is just like, it's like a modern country vibe. And you just would never think that it was kind of recorded with digital instruments, partly. Mm. Um, but it was, and it sounds, but it sounds amazing. Um, so that, that's like my my home setup, and that's where I would, that's how I would record. Yeah. Just generally MIDI into a VST. I think it's the acoustic samples one that that I use. It's like a package of uh, Hammond, um, well, it's a, a piano, a clavinet, you know, yeah. all the sort of vintage keys gear. Um, you just do, you know, go, do like a high quality bounce, and that's good enough to go into a into a mix. Yeah, uh, it's been working really well. Um, live wise, like my uh, the keyboard that I use for everything is a, a Nord Electro. Uh, I've been through one or two sort of other different manufacturers and whatnot, but the the Nord instruments um, are just bulletproof. Yeah, firstly. Uh, and secondly, like the quality of the I'm touching uh, wood for you now, just in case. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's I, worst thing you could have said. Yeah. <laughs> it's been honestly, I, I absolutely love my Nord, um, and that, that, that's the basis of my live rig essentially. Mm. Uh, I'll use like a, a Sennheiser in ear monitor system wherever I, wherever I can. Um, if we've got a big enough stage and if we've got um, enough time to set up, um, I'll also bring a Viscount a Legend. Which is like a Hammond clone. Mm. Uh, again, Viscount. Viscount. I thought they were a type of biscuit. <laughs> it's a biscuit as well, apparently. <laughs> Green. Comes in the wrap. Fancy biscuit, yeah. you know. Okay. It's one. a fancy keyboard. You Just watch your teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get you one to put in the keyboard. <laughs> Why not? Fix that little Titanic. I'm gonna get you. This, all these things. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like the the Viscount is incredible. It's like a dual manual thing with all the drawbars, and it's kind of laid out like a Hammond um, B3. So you know, it's got all the switches for reverb and chorus, and the, you know the Leslie switch and all the rest of it. Um, sounds incredible, and um, you know, just give like a stereo um, pair to uh, front of house, and sounds great. You don't need to carry a Leslie. You know, all the like the Leslie effect is on the keyboard. Mm. Uh, I do have a Leslie. But you know, I don't have a big enough vehicle for all this equipment. Yeah, yeah. You know, I could really sort of yeah, kind of yeah. go to town. I could like, you know, have a um, like an Nothing. amplifier, keyboard amplifier for like the Wurlitzer patches that I use. Nobody wants a Leslie speaker in their life I would, outside. I would, I would have it on the stage with me every night. If... <laughs> Are you sure? Oh, hundred percent. Hmm. If I had, if I had a big enough car, okay, um, enough people to um, help me move it right. I'd have a Leslie and a Hammond and all the gear but like you know these digital instruments modern ones are just you amazing see the future well you know you've got people like the Edge bringing an Arctic dust of guitars half of the time you know if if you're in that position you're just going to do it aren't you I suppose he's not driving it or humping it that's it yeah <laughs> right so you're joining you too then that seems to be where we're going with this one then. <laughs> mm. so I'm the same it's like I've got like got obviously like various kind of stacks and bits and bobs and stuff and some things in storage but half of the time it's like I turn up places and I just put a line six floorboard down the floor go straight into the PA into my ear monitors yeah and it it works um well, that was I do, I do miss that, we were, we were talking, air moving behind me though <laughs> we were talking about earlier um, when we we're talking about recording this um you know Angelie this next uh, Hearts and Souls record the the original um idea was that we would record the guitar parts um at mine that's, mm. You know, so like I've got the VSTs yeah. for the keyboards, and I've got um, like Amplitude, mm. um, which you know I, I like to play guitar a little bit as well. Not, um, you know, I don't sort of play any bands with guitar or anything, but I like to you know just play for myself. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, this Amplitude I think is incredible. I think it's a really accurate. Well, so from from my perspective, it is. I don't know yeah. from a guitar player's, but it, it's, it sounds right to me. Mm. And that's how we were going to record. I mean, do you do you use like those kind of um, um, they, oh, what did the guys use now? It's going to wind me up. I can't remember off the top of my head what they used. Um, oh, it's got the word guitar in it. But, um, <laughs> like, um, it's going to wind me up. It has all like, the, the manufacturers <laughs> endorsed like sections. You know, it's got like a, it's got Marshall amplifiers in there, and you know, mm. uh, Fender combos, and it's got you know Orange and whatnot. So you, you can pick all these individual um, gear options, and you know they sound authentic. 
Yeah. You know, it, it might not sound authentic to, like when you you know for like touch and feel as a player, but when you've got um, the result of that recording, and that then goes into a mix. Yeah. It's you just can't tell the difference. So one of the guys in uh, well, both the guys in Farron, they'd gone from lugging big heads around to yeah. going to floorboards but with amps still but then they've gone back to valve heads again the pair of right. them but uh, one one of them had a Kemper and me personally I can't tell much of a difference here in his Kemper to his new Victory amp they both sound great but I, it, it obviously there's, there'll be differences but it's it's not enough when a live band's playing for me to notice no personally <laughs> there's a lot of people that will tell me that they can hear it in immediately. I don't think everybody really? could. Well, <laughs> What's your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, with that stuff coming in. Well, the thing is, I, I couldn't have a simpler setup than anybody in the whole world. Mm. Right? So I've got a two by twelve. Yeah. I've got a blue guitar amp one. Yeah. You know, and I've got a. Um, a EQ pedal going through the send return to boost the volume for solos. Yeah. And a tuner. Mm. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Or sometimes, you know, I've got I'll I'll put the I've got a Marshall two thousand head, which I do like. You know, as long as I'm not carrying it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll use it. And for recording, it's like I've got a seventy seven telly that's been on basically every record. I've ever made, mm. you know, um, V52 vintage and a VS6, which is like an SG set up for slide. Yeah. Um, and then if I'm recording with Joe Elliott, just go over there and because of, oops, sorry, <laughs> you know, they set up, you know, they press the button and up I come. Because when I first, when I did the first album with him, we spent a lot of time getting sounds. Yeah, yeah. And it's still in there somewhere. Dunk. Yeah. You know, and it, it, I don't even take a guitar there. Just the Def Leppard guitars are there. So just plug in. Yeah. So I see you, know. you play the, you've got that vintage Les Paul, haven't you? Yeah. That, that, the, the latest one is the natural V100, mm. which is fabulous. So yeah. I, I, I first found you because I was, I knew uh, Gav Coulson yeah, and yeah. I went to JHS because uh, yeah. I got a little like a vintage endorsement yeah. thing going on I had this little strap at the time very early days um, and I've not really been in I would I would say a significant band playing guitar ever since so yeah. that kind of like fizzled out early days but that's when I first saw you because you, yeah. were, you were starting to appear in all the posters with those guitars and things that's like right. that and it was quite nice to see someone that had actually done all these different things and happy to use this equipment that some people would turn the nose up because there's a lot of people that are bron kind of brand snobs aren't they out there yeah. and well, I'm not really I, I, I'm, I'm totally not and the thing is we were actually there today yeah yeah I'm, you know I'm doing some stuff with them and uh, the great thing about them is they haven't rested on their laurels you know I've been with them 13 years yeah I just watch them improve and improve and work on them, work on them. Not just, okay, we've got a, you know, a, this price guitar, you know, bum, bum, bum. They really have yeah, improved, and you know, so they're going up, with the, up through the rankings, you know, and I've, and I've got a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, why not? Why not? You mean, like you say, what you, what you could pay for a top yeah. dollar Gibson, you could get quite a few of those. Yeah. and I enjoy and them. Yeah, you know, I've got. I've, I mean, I've got my, you know, my main Les Paul. I've had it for forty three years. Mm. You know, so I've got, I've got those things. Yeah. So I had um, uh, this this black Tokai Les Paul that I bought from Jake, who plays in Farron, and he, he always regretted kind of selling it yeah. me because it was um, it was a fr a, a friend called uh, Jeff. He was a, he was a crew guy. He used to work with like DC and yeah. Les with everybody passed away a few a few years back and uh, he says I wish I'd not got rid of that guitar because that's the one that Jeff kind of kitted up for me yeah uh, so after a bit of time I ended up letting it go back to him 
but I really didn't want to, but it's just because I like him <laughs> that I let it go. And I still regret it to this day because that felt better than some Gibson Les Pauls that I'd played that were four or five times the price, what that was worth. Yeah. I think, it's, I mean, you know, I don't even think about the pricing. It's, it's like I either like it yeah. or I don't, and it works for me or it doesn't. Yeah. You know, so, you know, say like, say the Pepsi Challenge thing, it's like, does it sound right? Does it play right? Does it stay in tune? Yeah. And ultimately, does it look cool? Yeah. <laughs> Which is important. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I think um, as well, though, it's like you, you could have a certain guitar that comes out and everyone says, oh, this is great, but maybe there's only one in 20 of them that you feel yeah. that is, is great because... it speak to you. Yeah, because I... I I'm always terrified of the idea that like I'll buy things off the internet. Yeah, and then, man, but, I'm right with you with that one. But I'm terrified. That's why I've not got as a mace. I would have had one years ago. Yeah, had I been able to get one. You want to try something, yeah. and, you, and then if you like it, you want that one because Absolutely. the next one that's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah looks yeah. identical, yeah, yeah. feels completely Order different one from Japan yeah. like that. You ain't got through, <laughs> though, have you? What's coming? Looks pretty. I went to the custom shop, the vintage custom shop in Fort Worth, mm. about a month ago. And picked up some stuff, and I mean, I'm talking incredible. Yeah. These guitars, I mean, you know, <laughs> that's just incredible. Yeah. You know, but as they say, that snobbery thing because of, you know, it isn't thin, it isn't this, that, you know what I mean? People need to get past that. Yeah. You know, things change. Yeah. I, um, I've seen quite recently, um, Jim Kirkpatrick, who plays in FM, and he's yeah. he's got like a solo blues project. He's, he's played with loads of people, as you probably he's, know. He's a busy lad. Yeah, <laughs> he he uh, obviously they've they've had problems with kind of gear getting damaged or stolen and things like that. So he he said that he bought a couple of hundred quid's worth of Squire Strat, took it out with him. He's in love with it, and yeah. he's posting videos about it, and he's he's saying it's just such a great instrument. And you get a lot of people. Who wouldn't be seen dead playing a squire because they've only got to be seen playing a fender. Does the it, thing does is, it you know, really like, matter? You know, in, in the seventies, <laughs> it you know a copy, it was either a shit copy, yeah, or Gibson or a fender. It, 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 it's a billion years since then. You know, <laughs> most things are pretty good these days. Yeah, you know, and I just prefer them. Yeah, I've seen quite a few coming through with like you, you know. There's, your, your Chapman guitars, your uh, Sire and stuff like that, and this, this the, the list is endless, really. There's, there's, it is. there's actually so many great instruments coming through now. A bit like bands, it's they're, they're not getting they're not getting seen because there's mm. too many of them. That's it. And people are very capable. Well, I'm always uh, like to end my podcast asking my guests what advice would you give to your younger self. And I always love that face that everyone pulls at me. What advice should I give to my younger self? Yes. Don't drink. Don't drink. <laughs> Just in, in general? Don't start. Don't start. No, no, no. <laughs> you have no fucking idea what is sat in front of you, my friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, That's anymore. good advice for most yeah. people, to be fair. Don't get into it. <laughs> Don't listen to fools. Yeah. When you know that, when you're listening to one and you feel. You you know you're not high enough, up, high enough up, in a position to challenge them, mm. even when you know you're right. Stand your ground, even if it puts you back. Career-wise, a little bit. Yeah. It actually would do you better in the long run. I think that's pretty sound advice. I've definitely been in that position multiple times, not just in music, just Every, in yeah, yeah. everything. Everybody has. <laughs> yeah. I think mine will probably be around just maybe practice more. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I think, you I know, think I can you can never practice enough, can you? Oh, no. And, uh, you know, for me, it's like, you know, I'm not um, personally like a super talented musician or, you know, creative in that way. So, like, everything I'm able to do is just through effort. Yeah. So it's like, you know, just do, really do more of that. You so are very good. You are very good. I've heard you play many times now. You are very good. <laughs> just through all the hard work, mate. You sound good. <laughs> Thank you. Excuse me, how do you get to Birmingham Arena? <laughs> practice, lad, practice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. We all, uh, every, every, well, it's, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing it, you'll always can learn something new, can't you? Absolutely. Regardless of who you are. You never stop. I love it when I, when you, there's a lot of these YouTube videos out there now where you'll get, they'll put, 
amazing guitarists together and what and I love when the other one's open to watching what that other person's doing rather than just thinking I'm better than them they can be like I know. oh my god how are you doing oh, that because like, it's just something that they've not done before I'm not Hon- honesty's a wonderful thing yeah it is it can mm-hmm. land you in a lot of shit as well, to be honest, but it's, uh, it I've is a wonderful... I've a lot of shit for being <laughs> honest, dishonest, anything makes no difference. But, you know, but in that situation, it's just like, hey, fabulous. Yeah. I find a lot of inspiration through that. Like, when you see, like, players who are better, you know, that that, that for me is just like, this is something new to learn. Yeah. And, I mean, I've, I've had, um, like, the pleasure of having... Um, Periodic lessons with uh, uh, a keyboard player from uh, who's based out in Austin, uh, Texas, a guy called Dane Farnsworth, mm. um, who's toured with um, Marcus King, um, and he's currently touring with Kebmo. He's, he's like he's like on the road with Kebmo, uh, and I, I said, and I've had several online lessons with him, and like I, I just can't get enough information from him. You know, it's just like <laughs> he's just got this wealth of like talent and ability. I'm just like. I just need to somehow get this. You know, so. Yeah, I think um, everyone needs to just—they need to be definitely open when they're coming across other musicians, and don't judge them just like you know by what gear they've got, what image it is. If you don't know who they are, and just like I say, there's, you probably can learn something from most people. 100%. Might might not necessarily always be to do with music. You might need to learn something from about life because there's. There's just so much, isn't there, got to learn, really? <laughs> and, and there's so many mistakes to make. <laughs> yeah, yeah I believe too. Einstein died in his bed going over the things that he'd already done because he hadn't <laughs> done them right. I believe that's correct. Yeah. Well, we're going to shoot now. Okay. But I'm, uh, Listen, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate you guys coming down. I hope you've me. enjoyed thank it. And, yeah. um, I, I've enjoyed myself, and I'm a right miserable git. Yeah. Yes. You've and we would love to come back. Yes. You're smiling. If you, do yes. the, if you get the live lounge set yeah. up, we'd oh, love yeah. to come back and yeah, yeah. play some music for you. Definitely. 100%. Let us mm-hmm. know. Yeah. yeah. We'll sort that you out. You never know. He well, might be here with us. Why not? Who knows? Yeah. Next time he's here. I'll set up some bits and bobs. But yeah, good well, luck well, with. Well, I mean, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck with all everything that's going on because there's so much. Obviously, it's, it's quite an exciting time. Uh, we're fresh out of lockdown, hit the ground running. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys. All right, See you, you soon. Cheers.